Bruchem Aboyim. Thank you for coming. <clears throat> Tonight's topic is um, really in connection with the time of the year. We're in the month of El and right before Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur. The topic tonight is regret. There was a book that was written by uh, Bronnie Ware called Regrets of the Dying. And she was a uh, person who worked with people who were dying at home the last three to 12 weeks of their lives. And they would discuss their regrets. And she really sums it up to five basic things. The main thing people said is that I wish I had the courage to live life true to myself, not the life others expected me to be. To be. Again, basically unfulfilled dreams. Most people don't even fulfill half of their dreams. Then she said it, people said, I wish I had, hadn't worked so hard. Again, the fact that they didn't have chance to watch their children grow, to be around for all the important things, those things that make your life special. And closer relationship with the spouse, just not enough time to be able to take care of things because they, they worked harder than they really needed to. Thirdly, I wish I had the courage to express my feelings. People many times for the sake of peace, they don't say things, they let things go. Some things need to be said, some things need to be addressed, just uh, both for you and for the person that you're dealing with. Fourthly, I wish I had stayed in touch with friends. That in life many times there are relationships that we need to keep up, we should have kept up, only to see at the end that we missed the love and adoration, the communication, the connection to those people that were special in our lives. And the fifth thing she said was that I wish I had been had let myself be happier. And it seems that people have such a fear of change that as much as people complain about their lives, if they, as an old saying, if everybody took all of their troubles and put them in a, in a circle, that people would grab their own troubles back as much as they complain about them. They're comfortable in what makes their, stops them from being happier. And how do we, again, the, the, the necessity to lighten up, take a chance, and the real problem is from the moment you lose your health, it's really too late. It's really health that brings freedom, the ability to change, the ability to do something. And once you lose that health, it becomes difficult. Now religiously, it's a bit different though. Her thing to begin with of courage to live life true to myself, it's really something that the Torah demands of us. Not only does the Torah demand of us to be honest with other people, it demands us to be honest with ourselves. You can't even lie to yourself. And we see that in the blessings it says the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob. That there's also an importance. The Torah demands of us to be unique, to bring our own personalities into life, to not be as others expect us to be, but to find our place. We are all part of a jigsaw puzzle, if you will. And if we become someone else, we're useless. And if we don't fill out those dimensions that God wanted from us, then we don't fill that part in that jigsaw puzzle that we must do. And again, so religiously that doesn't work. She, uh, not working so hard. The truth is, any religious Jew, no matter how hard he works, still there's Shabbos, and there's Yontif, and whether you want to or not, you know, this year we have three years, three days Yom Tovim is connected to Shabbos. Your kids get to see you. They have to see you. You know, where I don't have time, I don't have 10 minutes to eat on, sh on the Shabbat, I'll spend three hours at a table with friends and family, and it's relaxed. You know, you walk to shul with your kids, and, not, and it, it's all, it develops a family relationship that whether, even if you're busy and you're working hard, these things exist. The courage to express his, one's feelings and doing things for the sake of peace. 
The Torah tells us very clearly not to hate your brother in your heart, which tells us that if you're having a problem with someone, talk to them. That we can't keep things deep within us. We need to bring things out and talk things out. And it's amazing how things that aren't said, I always say problems are like a vampire that lives in darkness within us. The Eitzahora lives only in darkness, evil inclination. When you talk to people, it's amazing how things that seem so difficult get so easy. And this is, again, something that the Torah demands of us, communication. The reason why Yosef and his brothers didn't get along is they didn't talk. There was no shalom between them. There was no peace. I wished I had stayed in touch with friends. The truth is a Orthodox Jew has to live in a community within a mile from a synagogue. He has to walk. It creates a Jewish neighborhood. And really, if you're in the right synagogue, what you really have is a family. People care about each other. Every joy is doubled. Every sorrow is cut in half. So this thing of not staying in contact, sure, there are other people around, and you, maybe we should, but there's still a nucleus of love outside of your family that is part of your life. It makes your life much fuller. And then the last of, I wish I had let myself be happier, this fear of change. As it says in Pirkei Avos, Ivdu Hashem Basimcha, we have to serve God with joy. If you see someone who claims to be an Orthodox Jew and he's not happy, he's not an Orthodox Jew. Because if you believe in God and you believe that everything is being take of, taken care of by a benevolent Father who loves you, how can you not be happy? Every choice is being made is the right choice. We have an instruction manual the Torah to tell us what to do. And then we have a benevolent father who oversees what we do. You know, people spend their whole lives thinking about could've, would've, should've. And that's really a waste of time. If there's something you should've done, do it. If there's something you could've done, then again, do it. There's, as long as there's life, there's time, there's an ability. It doesn't end. The game's not over until it's over. As long as a person has life, and especially health, you can change what it is. And that's really this whole idea of Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur, the idea of taking inventory every year of what the year's been like. And it's not about changing everything. It's about changing something. Just change something. Go on the road of trying to figure out what needs to be worked on. Be honest with yourself. And this is what God demands of us. And there's always that fear of failure, and that's why we don't do things. But the truth of the matter is that good judgment comes from experience. And experience comes from bad judgment. You learn nothing from success. You learn a whole lot from failure. So failure is not the worst thing in the world. It's not something we have to fear. You make a mistake, correct it. Learn from it. Grow from it. You know, Nike's emblem means just do it. Life is a choice. It is your life. Choose consciously. Choose wisely. Choose honestly. Choose happiness. Happiness is not something that you buy in the store. It's something that you decide you want. You know, many of us are sailboats. We put our sails up, the wind blows, we go, we're happy. If the wind doesn't blow, we're not happy. Why? Be a powerboat. You put the key in the ignition, you go where you want to go. You don't wait for happiness. You go after happiness. Sure, there are things that bring us all down, but that's supposed to be a place you visit, not a place you live. When you find yourself there, you leave. We prepare ourselves for misery. Why? If misery is coming to town, guess what? I'm not home. And if I am going to be home, I'm not talking to the guy. I'm sure not going to clean the house. I'm not going to give him something to eat. He can leave anytime he wants. And if I'm being rude, great. What we do is just the opposite. We clean the house, we get everything ready, and we make sure we're home. He doesn't have to even knock. We're opening the door for him as he's walking up the, up the walkway. Why? Why? Happiness is a choice. Reb Tarfin says in Pirkei Avot, 
You're not expected to complete the work. At the same time, you're not free to evade it. And that becomes the point. That sometimes we think, well, I, I really can't do it. I, I, I can't finish it anyways. Who cares? Start. You might be amazed at what you can do once you start. You know, I live on a lake and I kayak. <laughs> First 10 minutes, <laughs> I always wonder how I get around the lake. But I seem to get around the lake all the time. Because the toughest is the beginning. Beginnings are the toughest of everything. Get past it. And it's amazing when you look back how far you're able to go and what you're able to accomplish. The, so I read something I think that summarizes it just very well. Never regret a day in your life. Never regret a day in your life. Good days give happiness. Bad days give experience. The worst days give lessons. And the best days give memories. The word better and bitter are very similar. Just a little difference in one little letter. There is nothing in life that is bad. There are things that are bitter, but they always make you better. You want to make steel as hard as it can be, make the fire harder. The higher the flame on that steel, the stronger the steel will be. If you ask someone about their life, the first thing they're going to tell you is not about the everyday good things that happen. They're going to tell you about the difficult challenges they had as they grew up, as they got successful. I remember Romney, when he was running, his wife was talking about them living in a small apartment and using an ironing board for a table. A guy with a net worth of $350 million. wasn't talking about his $350 million. He was talking about an ironing board. And that's what we all do. Those tough times. The times that we think we regret are the times that we cherish the most because no pain, no gain. We got through them. And while we're going through them, we're miserable. But why? The truth is, think about it. That's what's going to define your life. That's what you're going to tell people about. That's what you're going to talk about. That you had tough times and you got through them. And you're proud of it. So while you're going through it, think about that. There is nothing in life that will not make you stronger. If it won't kill you, it will make you stronger. And that really becomes the key. You can choose to be happy. And understand, Reb Zusha on his deathbed was crying. A great rabbi. And his students said to him, Rebbe, why are you crying? He says, I'm not crying because when I get to heaven, they're going to judge me on why wasn't I like Moshe Rabbeinu, like Moses. He says, what bothers me is they're going to ask me, why wasn't I like Zusha? Why wasn't I all that I could be? And that's really the key. Why have regrets? Be who you want to be. Be who you need to be. Be what you must be. You don't have to be number one, but you sure have to try. You know, triumph. Just the word broken down to try with more oomph. Difference in the Olympics. One guy just wants to win a little bit more, a hundredth of a second. One. 211 degrees, you have a hot cup of tea. 212, you can move a locomotive. I have regrets. Just put one foot in front of the other. God is the one who really deals with success. It's not yours. But what is yours is effort. And if you put the effort in, the truth of the matter is you will never have any regrets. And you'll live a life of happiness. Because happiness is a choice. Choose happiness. God bless, and thank you for coming.